Kabuki, 1986, 25 years ago. And the thing that really, when you look back and you research the game, there's so many things that people just don't realize. Like, you think you know what happened, but, you know, first of all, you know, everywhere from Marty Barrett being player of the game, obviously that's not going to happen. Bruce Hurst was supposed to be named MVP. They even went as far as congratulating the, Bo the Boston Red Sox on the scoreboard at the stadium. I mean, it's insane. And I know you had just done a, a TV show last night, and it's just amazing what people really don't know from what happened. Well, I, I think that um, for, for, for fans, I think they're just like the players. You get so involved in the moment, you know, and, and what's happening, uh, the moves and the desire for your team to, team to win, that you overlook or forget what you actually see. Um, for instance, one thing that I, I learned last night was that um, there's all been a controversy about you know, why Bill Button was still in the game, you know. Um, and actually, we didn't know that Bill had been out of the game in all of the Red Sox seven wins that year in the playoffs. So that game six was actually the only game that he was on the field um, in the the game. That's unbelievable. And who came in for him defensively? Uh, it was... Uh, Playing with Dave Stapleton, uh, which whom I knew very well. I played against him in AAA when he was in Patuck and I was in um, Tidewater at the time. Uh, so he was the defense replacement during that period. Wow. And the other thing that I think nobody realizes is at the time that the ball went through um, Bill's legs, it was 5-5. The game was tied. Like, it wasn't like the Red Sox were winning and then that turned it. You had, I guess, Giraldi with the pass ball, you know, which scored a like, Carter. Yes. Okay, which scored Carter. That made it 5-5. So really, at the time you did that, it was really a tie game. I think if you asked 90% of the fans, they would have thought that, you know, the Red Sox were winning at the time. <laughs> well, actually, um, you know, we go back to the pass ball. Actually, I think Carter scored before. I think Mitchell scored on the pass ball. Oh, Kevin Mitchell, Kevin right. Mitchell okay. scored on the pass ball. And there were a lot of things that happened, you know, in that game before the ball went on the Bill Bones leg. And I think that people tend to forget that. But I think it's interesting um, because people don't remember the last thing. It's kind of like when you're looking for something, you say, well, you always find it in the last place you look. Well, that, exactly. <laughs> that's what it, you don't remember the last thing that, that, that happened, and it was so uh, dramatic and so unpredictable that, yes, you know, that moment is embedded in his mind, but it tend to overshadow everything else that happened way before that event even occurred. And then the other thing you look back is you had the day off after game six that it rained, and then another amazing game in game seven, you know, which comes down to actually extra innings. I think it was it was a three to two victory in 10 innings. Well, you know, I, I think um, the, the rain out uh, helped Boston because it allowed them to bring um, their best pitcher in at the time. We had been the best pitcher that series, which was Bruce Hurts. Absolutely. Um, and, and quite honestly, we would have rather faced a right-hander as opposed to left-hander. Just for okay. technical purposes and stuff, we thought that we were a strong club against right hand pitching, um, which makes sense because we had um, Straw and we had Keith and we had Lanny and we had Wally, all of them from this power side. Absolutely. And, um, so as it turned out, you start the left hander, it turns everybody around. So, um, but that being said, um, a lot of things happened, and even that with the rain out and after game six, game seven was just as dramatic. Now, baseball is such a funny sport and such an incredible sport. And here it is 25 years later, and the fans of baseball are given a World Series again, you know, with a team, you know, it's 25 years later, and they always say a lot of times history repeats itself. You have a team down to its last strike, not once, but twice. Yeah. You have the incredible, incredible Game 6, and then the Game 7, where, you know, it, it just shows that's why they play the games. And I think 25 years later, how did you feel watching those games? Well, I, I think, um, watch the series this year. Uh, brought back memories, you know, because we there was a team that was pretty much in the same situation that we were in. Um, St. Louis played Texas, and of course Texas was in Boston shoe <laughs> for the number, um, and one strike away, one strike away. And uh, speak with Bruce Hurst um, last night, he said that we came as close as any team can come without winning. That's right. as close as you can. And the similarities with Texas was same. They were one strike away. You know, one strike away, and uh, for winning the World Series, and and I, I think that's something to be said for that. I think baseball is such a uh, a great game, and I think that you have to play the game. I mean, all the statistics, all your past history, your records, everything goes out of the window uh, because no one thought the St. Louis would be with you. Now we were together last night, obviously, with our really good friends over at Lord and Taylor, and they just do an amazing job as a retailer. 
one of the things that, regardless of statistics, at the end of the day, how many all-star games, how many big moments, the thing that really, you know, and being around athletes all the time at Steiner, you are no question an unbelievable fan favorite, where people just have that connection to you that we rarely see with anyone. What, what is it that you've done, or, or is it, what is it that makes you that fan favorite when you see a, you know, a person or a fan, and they just get that big smile on their face, and they're like, Mookie. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, that's what I've done. I, I don't know, but sometimes it's about what you haven't done. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe that's what it is. Um, I, I think I'm, uh, I'm just a, uh, a normal guy um, okay. who played the game, was blessed enough to play you know, in the biggest stage in all the sports. And um, I don't think that that has altered my uh, opinion of people. I think people are, are the same regardless of their religion or their race, even their location where they live. Um, I'm from the South, but I'm an, uh, I was adopted by New York. You know, and okay. I, consider, I consider myself a New Yorker to a certain extent. Okay. I understand them. I understand their passion for their sport. I understand that their passion, um, the way they care about people, which if you live from the South, New York does not have a very good reputation. Okay. They, they are considered rude. You uh -huh. know, pushy, bossy, and um, nothing can be farther from the truth. I you know, yes, it's it's a rat race, no question about it. But um, I, I found to be very some very caring people here, and I have learned to 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 live in the city and to understand and appreciate what they do and in the life they live. And I do appreciate them accepting me um, a country boy. Uh, we also have an expression here: "Die for loose balls." I also think when I look back, and obviously being a fan from that time is you always hustled, you always ran it out, you always did a, a lot of things that today, you know, sometimes people don't see, and I think fans are like, wow, you know, you know that, that's really not right. I think, I think you did play the game, you know, from our fans' perspective with, you know, all of those little intangibles, and I'm sure that has a lot of reason. Well, you know, I, I think that people kind of uh, compare uh, professional athletes to um, little Jamie and Bobby played Little League, where, you know, it's always running, 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 you know, and, and this is what kids do. You know, sometimes they run for, don't know why they do it, they just know that they're supposed to run. But when you get, the higher you go, you begin to uh, eliminate uh, excess, you know, energy. You, you stop wasting energy. And I think that that's been taken out of context with a lot of professional athletes. I think that there's a big difference between wasting energy and, and running needlessly. I, I think what happened now is that they become so focused on the less I um, abuse my body, the longer my career would be. And I think that it leads to uh, the impression that they are not hustling, that they're not giving 100%. Uh, they're giving 100%, but they just pick their times when they're going to do it. Now what happens is that some have very bad timing. <laughs> <laughs> they don't hustle when they should be because right. they may give up on a play or, or, or whatever, and that's not good. That's not good, it's not an excuse, it's just reality, it is, I have to, coach professional athletes and I know what they're thinking about. They're thinking about being healthy for tomorrow. Um, today is just it's one game and you've heard uh, a lot of managers have said, well, I will not sacrifice my pitcher for this one game because there's tomorrow or next year that we have to worry about. That's why you see pitch counts and all that Absolutely. Kind of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, lastly is 25 years later, people still asking for that autograph. Yeah. And when you sign that ball and they have that big smile, does that surprise you? How do you feel about that? And you do have a reputation of signing everything for everyone, and you've had that reputation for a long time. And how do you feel about you know the autograph, you know the autograph industry, and the fact that people still love getting that Mookie signature yeah. on that ball? Um, it is amazing um, to this day that people still uh, appreciate my autograph, and without being able to explain it fully, it's very flattering to me, to have people come up and still appreciate shaking my hand, taking a photo with me, uh, my sign a ball, a piece of paper, a t-shirt, that really means something to them. Um, and it's genuine appreciation. And it makes you wonder, you know, uh, and, and appreciate people, you know, that you know, that they do accept you for not only a ball player, I'm no longer a ball player, but they accept me now as a person who did play the game. And um, I, it's one of the most flattering moments ever. That's why I try not ever to 
refuse a fan. Um, I've not said that I sign every fan that calls me when I'm walking on the ball field right. stuff there because that's impossible to do. But I do try to treat fans with respect because I think they've shown that respect to me. Great. Well, we're very proud to have you up here. And, you know, one of the things with Steiner Sports is creating the moment and taking that moment that the fan really loves and getting them the right product line and, and getting them the things that they could hang up on the wall and, sure. you know, remember the day. And I think through this interview today, we probably brought to light a few things that people don't remember. Yeah. And we got to set the record straight. And even, you know, what's amazing 25 years later, there's a couple things about that series that you didn't even know. Uh, so, it's, it's no question about it. It's, um, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Thank you very much. Thanks Pleasure having you up.